professionally, I'm a planetary scientist. I spent a lot of time in planetary science, and professionally, I'm also a science educator. I thought it would be cool to start looking at what is science and science education. And I think the last question, what is science education, is very simple, because I firmly believe that science education in the classroom ought to be a model of what science is all about. In other words, um, allow children in classrooms to slip on the shoes of the researcher and immerse themselves in science. That's what science education should be. And the next question then is, well, what is science? And so that's a question to you. What, what do you think science is? And I suspect the kinds of thoughts that you're having right now probably come from your experiences in a science classroom or maybe listening to the latest news um, broadcast uh, on the television or uh, over the internet about some new discovery. Um, but very few of us get their understanding of what is science by going to scientists and engineers and saying, excuse me, but what is it that you do? And that's a really important thing to do, to talk to the practitioners about what science really is. And so let me start off by saying what science is not. It is not a book of knowledge. It is not about memorizing lots of facts and information. It's not about somebody handing you a procedure for an experiment and saying, go do this. Science is much more than that. Science really falls within a greater landscape called human exploration. And make no mistake about it, scientists and engineers are explorers in every sense of the word. And exploration starts with something incredibly magical something very powerful. Every exploration starts with something called a question. To be able to ask a question of your world is a gift, which means that if you empower yourself to ask a question, you can launch a journey of exploration. And I guess the best way to get this across in concrete terms is a number of years ago, I had this conversation with a friend of mine at the National Zoo in Washington, D.C., and Roger said, you know, Jeff, I understand what you're saying because when I was a really small kid, there was this one question that I loved to ask, and that question propelled me into, a, um, a, uh, into getting into zoological research. And the question he used to ask in his backyard is very simple, very elegant. It was, I wonder what's under that rock. And he'd go over to a rock, and he'd empower himself to ask this question, I wonder what's under that rock. And he'd lift it up, and he'd see this brave new world of creatures that would not come out otherwise um, if he didn't ask that question because they don't like the light of day. And he saw all of these creatures. It was a new experience for him, and a smile broke across his face, and he reveled in that learning experience, and it propelled him to ask that question of that rock over there or this rock over here. And when he finished looking under all the rocks in his backyard, he went to parks. And, and so the whole idea is that this embodies, to a great extent, what science is. It's a journey. It's a process. It starts with the gift of a question. It's an art form because scientists and engineers as artists need to understand the kind of question they can ask and frame a pathway to an answer through the noise of the universe around us. That's an art form. And science is intensely emotional because at the end of that exploration, that smile breaks across your face and and you, you get this sense of revelry. It's a joyous experience. Um, the other thing that's kind of interesting is that science is practiced by people just like you and me. And look, I, I don't wear a pocket protector. There are lots of stereotypes with regard to science. And I, I guess another way to say it is that science is really about organized curiosity. It's a way that we take our natural innate curiosity and organize it so we can reveal something powerful about the world. And I, I, I suppose a way to kind of frame this is to say that all parents remember that very magical time when their children were growing and, and were just capable of talking 
and expressing themselves. And at that moment, what's kind of interesting is that those children, without prompting, ask lots and lots of questions. We are innately curious. We, we are driven to ask questions about our world. And those, children's, those children do this long before they know anything about school or the way that society frames school, which is a place to uh, learn so you can get a good job and money. That, that's not really what school is about. Those go along for the ride. School is a place where we as a, as a, as a species of explorers embrace our innate curiosity about the world so deeply that we've created schools and school systems where our children can go and learn freely. And so our children ask questions to satiate their natural curiosity about the world. And a, a few years ago, I tried to come up with a way that, that to say it that's both powerful and poetic. And so here goes. Um, the journey is written in our genes but the book of knowledge is not. We're born to journey. And I think that that ought to be a, 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 not only a, a powerful characterization of science and what scientists and engineers do and what explorers do in, in disparate fields, but it also should be a benchmark for teachers, our teachers in the classroom. The journey is written in our genes. The book of knowledge is not. It gives you a sense of what a classroom experience, what learning in a classroom ought to be. It should be about empowerment by the learner, self-empowerment to ask a question. It ought to be a journey. It ought to be something that is joyous. It ought to be about honing those critical thinking skills so that children can think through from an answer to a, uh, from a, from a question to an answer. It's not about memorizing a book of knowledge. It's not about teaching specifically to the test. Um, there's something wrong with education. Um, and so I think that that kind of frames what science is. And I'd like to conclude this segment by saying something about what I think the goal of science is. You know, what, what do we, what do we, uh, what, what's ultimately the goal for, for uh, science? And I guess the best way to say that is it's, it's like science, it's like Toto and the Wizard of Oz. And you might say, well, Jeff, that sounds strange. You're a strange kind of guy. Well, I, this is the way I think. And, and if you remember in the Wizard of Oz, at the end of, of, the, of the movie, um, Dorothy and her friends come back with the broom from the Wicked Witch of the West. And the reason they brought the broom back is because they had this pact with the wizard. The wizard said, look, if you get rid of the Wicked Witch and you bring back her broom, I'll give you a heart, a brain, courage, and I'll send you back to Kansas. And so they did. And they came back and they expected all of these things from the wizard, but the wizard didn't really think that they were going to do it. And so the wizard's sort of like, you know, backpedaling on the whole deal, and Dorothy and her friends are really, really upset. What does Toto do? Toto doesn't care. Toto goes over to the curtain and grabs the curtain in his teeth and pulls back the curtain, and we get to see reality. We get to see that the wizard is not really a wizard at all. He's just another Kansan that got lost in the storm. And so that's what science does. Science is about pulling back the veil on nature and seeing the majesty of how she operates. To recognize that the phenomenology in this world that we see around us is due to some majesty underneath that veil. And we pull it back and we do it because we creatively find a pathway to an answer to a question that may have been asked for thousands of years, but now, because of the fact that we have a new technology or standing on the shoulders of past generations, we get to see an answer. And we pull back that veil, that veil of nature. We see some new reality, and we revel in that experience. And you know what? Behind that, behind that new reality, there's another curtain.